Hi. Um, it, we have a lot of success stories on the site. We've videotaped, we've written about, and we have lots of success stories. Mark is absolutely one of them. He and Kate are pretty well known as far as quite, quite a team. Kate is Mark's service dog. They have traveled all over. Now, anybody can have success for a short period of time. It's the lasting successes that we're really concerned about. I can feel better for a day. But I am, am I able to go out and share those successes to affect other people? And that's truly the purpose of this training. Okay, now Mark he disappeared from us for oh, a couple months. We haven't seen him. Sure, he's off doing stuff. I knew that. Didn't tell me a word about it. He just disappeared. So all of a sudden he shows up yesterday and he's been out gallivanting all over the place. He's got this group of friends. Um, what are they? The, the Metal of Honor, Honor Society. Oh yeah. Cool. Alright. Mark took a big trip along with his buddy there and he taught people way on the other side of the world all about what it means to have a pretty cool dog. So maybe you can tell us something about your little trip, sir. When I got, when I went to Vietnam in 69, I was a tunnel rider. And uh, I had some bad experiences. And I had a pretty good job for a long time and worked for 32 years. And then one day I had a flashback. And that flashback gave me something called PTSD called post-traumatic stress disorder, they call it. I still don't understand what it is. But it lost a big part of my memory because it was like having a, the doctors told me several years later, it was like having a, uh, a, a stroke. And recently, and I met a whole bunch of people that were trying to help me. One of the people I was trying to meet was a gentleman that's a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient out of Chicago. And I've known him for 20 years, but the last five years he's been helping me come into Rockford to help other vets. So one day, a couple months ago, I got invited. He called me and asked me if I could travel. And I said, well, yeah, I could travel. He said, I heard you, you, you mentioned once you couldn't get on a plane. I said, I can't travel on a plane, no way. He said, how would you like to go on a trip with me sometime? I said, okay, well, I guess I can. You know, I'll do whatever you want me to do. He said, where are we going to go help some troops? We're going to Kuwait. <laughs> Wait a minute, Kuwait? That's outside the U.S. I can't, uh, I can't travel. He said, there are going to be a couple of doctors on board, and they're going to contact you and make some special arrangements so you can travel on a plane. And we're going to take a trip with the USO group and the Medal of Honor Society and a whole bunch of other people, and we're going to make a trip over to Kuwait for a USO show. And there's going to be a lot of people there. So you need to talk to your doctors and make sure you can travel. So I went through some meds and stuff and did all that. And I met with several people in Chicago with the USO. And they invited me through the Medal of Honor Society to attend with them. There were several Medal of Honor Society members. Not just Medal of Honor, Medal of Honor recipients, but some of their staff and helpers too that went with us. And several other people that you might know. One was Tom Selleck. I got to have dinner with him in Kuwait at a dinner we went to. Very nice. And we got to meet a lot of troops over there. We did three USO shows, and they asked me to tell my story. So I did. And of course, Katie goes with me everywhere. She was a champ. She was the only service dog on the, on the program. And she was great. And they got to meet him. And I handed out about 30 different 30 of my uh, challenge coins that has, has Katie's picture on my challenge coins. I've had her about five years now because I got Katie several years ago from Pat, from Kwanzaa Kennels. And I had to wait several years and go through a lot of training to get Katie. And then Katie was chosen for me, not by me, but by Pat and the team here that works that helps veterans. Now, you were with the Congressional Medal of Honor Society? I was a guest. 
you yourself have more than a couple of medals yourself, don't you? Yeah, but they're not important to me. I know, but what were they? Um, with all regular medals you get from just being in Vietnam and being in the service, I've got bronze stars, three purple hearts, and I've got three purple hearts because I was slow and I got shot three different times <laughs> in Vietnam. And I finally got sent home and ended up spending seven months in the hospital because I got my, my leg blown, blown apart and stuff. But the VA took care of me and I was able to go to college and then I ended up getting my doctorate from Purdue University in wow. computer science and went to work down at NASA at the Johnson Space Center and I was down there 27 years. Just a computer programmer in the back, but it was fun. I got to meet some of the brightest people in the world and now I'm meeting some of the nicest people in the world with the dog program here. And some of the people that help here are incredible givers. So I've tr been trying to spend the rest of my life helping the new vets. This trip to Kuwait was ex extremely exciting. We had a lot of fun. I think we had a lot of fun, and I think we, we helped a lot of the new vets that are going to be coming home from Afghanistan. One of the nice things was we, they had some people fly in from one, on board one of the ships. The nurses, the male and female nurses, flew in for one of the dinners for the USO show, and they were our guests. It wasn't about us, it was about the troops over there. And I got so, to introduce them to Katie and tell them what Katie does for me. Katie is your service dog. She is my service dog. She takes care of me, she goes with me everywhere. I go out to dinner, she's sitting right there with me. She takes care of me. Was she one of the first service dogs to be allowed in the Veterans Administration Hospital with a, as a PTSD? She was the very first one to come in. Katie even has a VA ID card with her name on it. She is the only one in the VISN, in the VA VISN, that has that qualification. She's also registered with the Secretary of State of Illinois, and we have a special ID card for her now. She's That's incredible. That is so cool. And she's got a birthday coming up. And I'm going to have her birthday party right here at the end of this month. <laughs> cool. And it's going to be a surprise. A What's her rank, Mark? She has a rank. She was given an honorary sergeant major rank. Wow. By the Medal of Honor Society. She is now their official mascot. As far as I know, she's the only mascot. Outstanding. They love her. They absolutely love her. And as soon as they send me the pictures, I'll have pictures with Medal of Honor recipients with Katie. But That's she's security. got some marvelous pictures. And Tom Selleck held her oh. in his lap. And we got pictures. That I hope they show up on these. That's but they were incredible. And we, had, and we didn't have any security problems, amazingly enough. Katie is still recovering. Sit, sit, Katie. Sit, sit. Good girl. You'll notice on her vest, I've got service dog here. And on the vest, it's got the first calf patch from Vietnam on a it's a special patch I was given by an organization I belong to called the First Calf Association that I'm also a member of. And we're, we're going to have a convention this next year in Chicago, and she's been invited to come. She's a little nervous right now because she's not used to the bright lights at all. Sit, kid. And she knows I'm a little nervous, so she's acting to try to calm me down. Because mm -hmm. I have this tremor going on, and I always have it. She calms me down. Without her, I wouldn't be able to talk to you today. Now, does she uh, wake you up when you're having night terrors in your sleep? One of the key things that she does for me is I have night terrors from Vietnam about two or three times a week at night. And she will come up. She sleeps in my bed at the foot of the bed, and she will come up and wake me from these night terrors by nudging me, licking me, just waking me up. And that wakes me up and allows me to go back to sleep. And it's gotten me off three of the meds that the VA had me on that I had trouble existing with because what would happen is they, they drugged you up. The VA drugged me up trying to help me. That's the only answer they had was drug you up. And I got tired of being a vegetable. I would sleep until noon 
and then I'd want to go to bed about 7 o'clock at night. That's no life. And after I got Katie and she helped me, I got off, I think, three or four of the drugs, psychiatric drugs. I still shake, I still have tremors, but I'm able to go out and help veteran staff, the new vets especially. You know, everybody here at uh, Closet Kennels absolutely loves your dog. Everybody should love Katie because yeah. she is she is the best. But what you might not realize, there's one or two of us that absolutely love you too. Thank you very much. Yeah, we all love you. Oh, you think? We're so proud of you. Oh, okay. Thank we you. all I love have, you. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Is it true that you've tried to help people your entire life? Yeah. You've tried to help and make the world better. You taught kids who had some disabilities, brought them to Eagle Scout rank, right? I was a scout leader. Yeah. Uh, Mark had, has been we doing had disabled things. kids. Right. All of them were disabled. All of them yeah. were homeschooled down in Tennessee yeah. when I was working, living down there. And every one of them made Eagle Scout. I was really proud of them. Okay, now I have a question for you. Sometimes people don't want to listen, do they? No. 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 So it's, it's very difficult to get their attention or to have them pay attention. Does she help you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We go into a room. She draws people in, doesn't and she? And she is so well behaved. Yeah. 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 And they say, how did she get so well behaved? Well, by the way. Yes. Cool. It's called training. <laughs> and once you've got the best trainer in the world and the best kennels anywhere and the best concept of training dogs, where you train them in a, with a pack mentality. And I am part of, I am the pack leader of Katie. She will do everything she, I tell her, ask her to do. I don't tell her to do. She knows, she's, she was learned to be a service dog here. She was taught. And then she's learned how to help me by living with me. And I've had her for four or five years five now. Five years. Five years now. And it's been an incredible five years. I didn't think I was going to make it. Now, when you first came, you got introduced to the dog. Right. And you said, when are we going to start training her? Right. Absolutely. What did I say to you? When you have a relationship, right. the dog will want to please you. Right. This isn't about obedience, is no, it? No, it isn't. Not at all. This is about a relationship. About a relationship. This is the most beautiful, perfect relationship. Thank you, Pat. You made my life. Thank you. You've given me hope. To help others. Mark is so special to us. Thank as you. everyone else is, too. But this, this trip, it's like yesterday, he shows up. Oh, by the way. And there was a time if I'd have done that to Mark, yeah. he would have jumped out of his skin with me. I would have, but with Katie, I'm a fine now. Yep. I'm a whole yep. lot better than I yep. can live. That's right. We're very proud of you. Thank you very much. We can't wait to see the pictures. <laughs> Does somebody else want to get out there? guy here with another little short dog and he has one of them US Cav hats on too. I bet he's got a story to tell us too. Right Dennis? Yeah. It's Dennis and his little dog Vicky. Yep. What's your dog's name? Vicky. Vicky. Yep. Vicky. V-I-C-K-Y. She just turned three in June I believe. Where'd you get that dog? Well a lovely lady by the name of Pat. Um, Not Pat Muller. Oh, yeah, I believe that's the one. Um, they started with the VA through their mental health program. They brought me down here and I got introduced to Pat and we started uh, coming in uh, once a week for quite a while, one or two years maybe, and then uh, I was kind of anxious to get a dog for myself, and Vicki, I'm not sure if I picked her or if she picked me, to be <laughs> honest with you. Pat picked both of you. Um, I came down early, once I got introduced to, to Vicki, I'd come down early and take Vicki out to a park where her and I would just get to know each other. And then, it just got to the point where I guess she got me. Yeah, it's There's no accidents, Dennis. And uh, she's been so good to me. The, the facility here has been just excellent with me, for me, I should say. 
Mm -hmm. And I, I highly recommend this place to anybody. Um, I am a Vietnam vet. What year were you there? I was there in 67 and 68. I was there for a 68 cat. And where were you stationed with the first cat? I was not with the first cab back then. Um, I was with automatic weapons. Uh, we had a uh, uh, twin 40 is what it actually was called. It's for anti-aircraft, basically. And we got farmed out to the uh, 3rd Marine Division up on the BMZ. So the further south I ever got was Da Nang. Wow. And then from there, it was 100 miles north called Dong Ha was our home base. That's where we farmed out of. And we went from uh, Khe San, Rock Pile, Kantian, and then back to Dong Ha for our so-called R&R. Khe San was hit pretty hard during that. Uh, it was hit very hard. Uh, I was there during Tet mm -hmm. when they had the place around it. Uh, we normally took our track on the road, went from one uh, location to another, but during that time period, we had to switch crews, do the same track there, so they choppered us in and out. And that was probably the worst part of the entire thing. Because uh, every time a chopper would come in, it was just like uh, a firing range for the NBA. They'd see one coming in, they'd start lobbing mortars on the landing bands. So that was pretty nerve wracking. Um, while I was there in Quezon, we took a direct hit from what they were telling me, us, I should say, is a 122 uh, rocket. Collapsed the bunker, um, killed quite a few people inside it. Um, I was pretty fortunate in a way. Um, I was wounded, but not very seriously. Were you in the bunker at the time? Yes, I was. And. I just got a few scars out of it, physically, mentally. Um, I still think about it. You have veterans guilt? Uh, yes, I do. Well, Very much so. Well. And the, that's part of why I'm, I'm here. Mm -hmm. With the PTSD and the veterans guilt, uh, that's why I'm here. And I used to have uh, night dreams about it. And I'll say pretty much the same as what Mark did, uh, two or three times uh, per week. And they medicated me, and I'm still on medication for it. But since I brought her home, um, again, she, she lays in bed with me by, by my feet, just like Mark, and she knows if I'm going to have a problem. I don't know how, she senses it, something, but she will wake me up. And if I'm already into it, by the time she gets up there, she will cuddle with me until I start calming down. So she's very, very good with that. And she will not leave my side. No matter where I go, um, I take her everywhere. I, I, I mean everywhere. We've not been on an airplane, so Mark is one up on us for that one. But uh, I take her into restaurants. She's like a magnet. She really is. People see her and they, they see how well she is behaved in a restaurant. Um, she goes in, she lays down, that's it. Doesn't move. Doesn't stay, get in anybody's way. And she won't move until she sees me getting up. Then she'll get up and it's time for us to move on. But people just, I don't know, they, they just can't get over how well she did, she behaves in, in public like that. Um, I've taken her in grocery stores. She had a problem with the shopping carts, so I corrected that. Now she rides in one. I take her, her, her blanket, put it in the bottom of the shopping cart there, so that she's not standing on those grates. She rides in that, she's got her paws up front looking around like, okay, where are we going next? <laughs> and of course some of the stores, you know, they ask if that's a service dog, she's got her vest on, and I say yes, it is, no problem there. there you know, I, I, don't, I don't mind them doing that. And they ask if 
she's my service dog. And I said, yes. And that's it. I've never really had them ask what she does for you or, or anything like that, although they could if they wanted to. Um, but no. Let me tell you, um, I take her to meetings um, with the VFW. Um, she's costing me money at the VFW because we all pay a buck for our, you know, just for being there. So since I've been taking her, she's been costing me a buck for that. So you have to pay two dollars. Yeah. To take yeah. Out. Yeah. She cost me a buck, but she's worth it. Yeah. She is. And you can, everybody you can sell there, head putts, pat on the head for fifty cents, and get your money back. I should. You should. I should. Yeah. Now, are you the one that dresses up like a doctor? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, What's that called? Her and I go visiting hospitals for people that we know that's there. You keep Nursing talking. Homes. I'm going to go get the picture. And what we do is she she dresses as Nurse Vicky. I dress as Dr. Feelgood with the doctor's coat. I have uh, steth the stethoscope, the doctor's coat. She has her nurse Vicky hat on with her service vest, and we go visiting patients. They love it. And then last year, I was a patient. I had hurt my, my knee, and what they have done with that is they allowed her to come in once in a while and visit with me. And this the nursing home I was at for rehabilitation, she uh, came in, she realized where she was. Yep. That's us, right there. And so what she what she does is she knew she was in that nursing home. She'd been there many times. So she wanted to go for a walk. And I got into the, the wheelchair and she pulled me, mind you. I didn't move the wheelchair. She pulled me to the lounge area because they, they have this uh, cage with birds in it. And she loves looking at them birds. I don't know if she's trying to get at them or what she's trying to do with them, but she pulled me the whole way there, and that's the whole length of the nursing home. So, so yeah, she uh, she does really good. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of her. I'd be lost without her. I'm not sure I could go out into public and feel feel right without her. Um, she's my everything. She she really is. Um, that's about it. If you had a magic wand, you could do it all over again. Would you have gotten your service dog earlier than what you did? Oh, without a doubt. If I only knew Pat earlier, without a doubt, I most certainly would have. Yes, and this is such a marvelous uh, program here. Um, I, I owe it all to her, really. Well, you are a gentleman and a scholar, and thank you very much for sharing your story. Thank you. One of the one of the really neat things about Dennis when he first came, he was he's always talked, but he never really was involved. Yeah. Dennis always kind of sat back and observed things. Dennis really didn't want to participate. He wanted to watch. Bell, and Mark. I'll never forget, okay, one of the rules I have around here is you don't learn on your service dog. You learn on another dog. Right. I'll never forget the day we went to Walmart. Yeah. And I, I said to Dennis, you need to see what it's like to have a dog. And so I handed him Bach. And Dennis and I walked, and Dennis held on to Bach. And Bach is pretty pretty cool guy. Um, he's very steady and he's he's very good. He's a little Lakeland as well. And I'll never forget finishing that walk. And we were sitting there talking. I think we stopped at the subway, the subway there. Yep. And the dogs laid underneath the table. We had yep. three service dogs with us in this little tiny table. And Dennis said, you know, when I walk through there with a the dog, people smile at me. Yep. And they asked me questions, but I didn't feel threatened. Right, exactly. And that's when I knew it was time to start getting a dog for Dennis. And just like Mark's dog, when Vicky was here, when Vicky first met Dennis, Vicky didn't know anything. Yeah. It was the teaching, the communication, the relationship. 
that caused Dennis to be the man he is right now. Because Good, better, of, and different. Well, I'm the boss. <laughs> There's got to be a pack leader. Yes. <laughs> but by teaching the person yeah. to be the leader, that means when this dog gets old, Dennis is going to be able to teach him. Yeah. This dog is going to teach you all the lessons it's got to teach you, and the next dog is going to teach you new ones. Yeah. And I just hope I'm up for it. Oh. Don't even hope. <laughs> None of that hope for this dog that does no. tasks. That's not a no. robot. No. That's your that's your buddy. Very much so. You bet. You can see it. And she cares about you succeeding. Yeah. And that's why she does what she does. Dennis is another guy we're really, really proud of. We have a number of people that we're very proud of. And um, this is, we were just so glad that both Mark and, and Dennis could come today. Um, we've got a few other ones here. And so we wanted to make sure we got them before they snuck away. <laughs>